What's up, boys? We're back again. A uh, long time since we've done a podcast with uh, Dusty and Toby and myself here. Uh, let's just kick it off. Dusty, what's uh, what's new in the tennis world with you? I haven't seen you in a while since uh, Christmas. Yeah, that's only been a couple months. So it's a oh, pretty short gap for us, Dill. Usually it's like six, seven, eight months. That is true. That is true. Pretty quick turnaround seeing each other. Yeah. Uh, I just got back from Costa Rica. I was there for two weeks or a little less than two weeks for some junior ITFs. And then I leave Friday to coach at a couple of uh, ATP challengers in Tenerife, Spain. Ooh, fun. I've been to Spain before. Just the airport. There's only... You're, 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 never you're been a big traveler. Spain. You've been to a lot of countries. Surprised you haven't been to Spain. Yeah, yeah, I would be. I have kind of surprised myself. Yeah, yeah I've not hit hit up Spain yet. I never wanted to play the dirt ballers, though. I just kind of skipped that and went over to like England. You excited for Spain? I'm, I'm excited for Spain. First time coaching uh, at the ATP level. So, so who are you coaching? Christian Harrison. He's about uh, two twenty, I think, right now. Uh, playing doubles with Ben Locke. No way. Is a buddy he of mine, actually. Yeah. Played at Florida That's State. Lock rank. Mm, maybe 400 in singles, but his doubles is higher. I'm not sure what his doubles is, though. Hmm. Well, he's consistently stayed top 400, huh? No. Yeah. From Zimbabwe, probably one of Zimbabwe's best players ever. Or for okay. sure one of their best <clears throat> players ever. Yeah, cool. All, All right. right. Well, that sounds oh, sick. Um, I'm trying to think. Anything new with uh, on the rise up here? Um, nothing crazy. Yeah, I feel nothing like crazy, crazy, dude. Um, no. We got two locations going. Um, for the winter. Um, no, no, so. not much. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to get right into it. Let's uh, you gotta get to a little bit noisy now. Cut, <laughs> cut. You know, what I happened? I I I panicked. I mumbled, but um. I uh, just wanted to start off getting to know us a little bit. Uh, just go around, talk about uh, our most memorable wins. Uh, Toby, how about we start with you? Uh, ooh, most memorable win ever. That's, that's really tough. I don't know. <clears throat> Felix. <clears throat> uh, that was a good win for me. Uh, I don't know. State tournament was really satisfying win. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, my senior year over this LMU, I was playing the uh, this guy was kind of a jerk. Clinched against him. That one felt really good. So I, I don't know. Match. Yeah, it's a clinch. That was came down to just me. So that one was good. Um, but I don't know. Uh, and yeah, in Egypt, I beat a really good player. Played out of my mind. I crushed him. He was like a fourteen point three. I just played out of my out of my butt and just worked him. But that was weird. That one. I don't know. That was kind of weird. Just played out of my mind. Wasn't that like satisfying, but it was it was pretty cool. All right, cool, <laughs> cool, cool. D- uh, Dusty, what about you? Yeah, uh, that's tough. Probably the most memorable one because it was the most important team one, probably the Big Tens. Was the team was tied three all with Michigan State. I was down four one in the third, playing one against Heist Linders. Oh yeah, how'd you spell that? And it was, uh, it was like, how'd you spell that guy's name? It was like G I G I J S or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Heis. Heis. That's how you say his name. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, came back and won. Uh, kind of because of my teammates were kind of heckling him a little bit, so I almost kind of felt bad because the guy was nice, and he was having a, he was having probably the worst loss of his career because of the moment of how big it was. Because if you lose, you're done and. For me, it was the biggest. Cause we, if I won, we moved on and played Ohio State. Um, and wait, I was wait, wait, where not, was that at? Uh, Illinois Big Tens. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Big Ten was held at Illinois that year. Yeah, so probably that. It wasn't my best win, but probably the mm-hmm. most memorable one. Clinching against them. You weirdly owned Michigan State very, very badly. Yeah, you I don't are, think I. Owned- you- he, or, oh yeah, uh, Mac I never Roy, lost or, it. Yeah, Mac Roy. Mac Roy he played at one. Dusty was down four match. Were we down four match points? I was down like six zero. He was down six zero, five six two or something. Or, yeah, yeah. And then I got to the tiebreaker, and then he was up. Well, yeah, six two, and I won six points in a row. 
And I think I won the third set like 6-0. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and and if Jesse would have lost, our team would have lost. Yeah. No way. Yeah, my freshman yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. So, and then we ended up winning. And, that means, and their coach I, is just... The guy was killing me the whole time, too. Oh, dang. We had, a, hor- we had a horrible day. Horrible day. We got yeah. murdered in doubles. We hadn't lost a doubles match all year. We got smoked by Michigan State's doubles. They were not a good, they were not a good team. And then uh-huh. I, I, I lost in singles. And then he was losing bad to stuff. Like, we both should have won. Then it turned around. Huh. That was a, that was a nice one. Turned around. Yeah. He owned Michigan State, though. Poor Gene Orlando. <laughs> Just worked. Got him. In him, in his head. Uh-huh. Nice guy. <clears throat> hmm. uh, uh, you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine's mine's very, very me, very Dylan Win. Uh, I was playing this tournament and I showed up about twelve minutes late to my match. A little game penalty, game. maybe. Uh, it was a three game penalty. Oh, and the guy got to decide. If, <laughs> the guy got to decide if he wanted to serve or receive first. So I was started down 0-3, Didn't get a warm up. He decided to serve, so I went down 0-4 right away. <laughs> so I lost the first, won the second, and won the third. Who were you playing? Oh, I don't remember his name. It was Gustavus guy. Uh, yeah, this mm. was like in like this other tournament. It was like a Gustavus guy. Yeah, and I showed up late. I don't know. I like didn't. I don't know. So it wasn't a team much. match. No, no. It was just like a tournament. It was back when Lakeville had their – they used that money tournament mm. in December. Oh, yeah. So like, where Go- like uh, where Gosia played Tony, I think in the final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. it could have literally been. Winner got a fair year. bit of money too. Yeah, it was it was a good tournament. So this was like, yeah, it was hilarious. This was in the qualies. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> and I remember the match went almost three and a half hours. Dang. So the match started at like seven or eight p.m. and it went three and a half hours. So then I had to get on for my next match that night at like midnight, and it was it was just crazy. But yeah, yeah. I, it was just classic, but I, I the guy was good, pretty good, and I beat I beat him. I don't know how. Most of Davis guys are pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, so I was like pretty pumped, and I was like, oh sweet, like I've been playing, I've been hitting a lot. That was the year we were training a lot together, so I was like, oh, it was kind of, I was like, oh, I'm getting better and stuff. So that was a pretty memorable win, also in a, in a way to realize you got to show up on. Wasn't time. my dad pissed? He showed up late. Too. Yeah, yeah, Dave was all over me. He's like, uh, what? He's like, he probably, probably wasn't surprised though. He's was probably mad, but also not that surprised at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was tough. Like, I was like working, so I literally only was late because I was like working and I left work and I was just gonna. It was a forty minute drive, so I don't know. Is what it Good is. Excuse. Yeah, so it wasn't like I was just being a schlep or like a peasant, but you know. Yeah. I don't know. Is what it is. But uh, but yeah, so uh, I think today we wanted to get together and talk a little bit about um, just being coachable and like coachability and like what that means from like maybe a coach's perspective as well. What does that mean from like, what would we expect as coaches from a player? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to, I'm like, uh, I'll cut that out, but yeah. Uh, Dusty. How about what out? No, it's, it's good to have a little awkward silence. What do you mean? Oh, okay. Well, I, I was just waiting for someone to give go me, for Give it. me time to well, practice I have a question once in a while here. I have I've been in school for a while. <laughs> I have some um, so what are what are some of the things that we like about coachability? Like having a player be coachable, or like coachable. you can actually work and help them compared to someone who's maybe uh, not coachable. Yeah, maybe stubborn, pretty stubborn. Yeah, well, um, I feel like I, um, I feel like the kids that are almost think that they know that they're they're like too smart. They overthink everything, and then when you tell them something, they don't think. Um, that, that, that's the reason why they miss a shot. Like, if you tell like them they, that the like they have they, an excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. But if you coach a kid who's not thinking too much, he's like, yeah, that's he for sure listens like right away. So it's almost like the kid, <laughs> the less the kid thinks, he listens like more. He's more coachable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like not over trying to, he's not trying to do it by himself. He's like more like, just listening to the coach instead of trying to figure it out on his own, especially at a lesson. Like if you're on a match, you have to do it on your own, but yeah. obviously. And like when you're, when it's you playing, yeah, it, like it's, it's much harder to realize what went wrong when the person standing behind you, his coach behind you can just see it so much easier. So, you know, 
if you have a coach you can trust, it just helps helps a ton having the extra yeah. eyes on you. And even if you don't, you just have to listen, and you can just uh, filter in and out um, what you liked or didn't like. You don't have to agree with the person all the time, but you can just shut up and listen and then try it if it doesn't work. Throw it out the door. Yeah. <laughs> well, usually it's those, yeah, those, the smarter kids that, like, as you're going to talk to them about what they just did, they're like already talking. No, 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 no I was just going to, I was going to go. And they're already saying something before you. Yeah. Talk, so the, over what you're going to say, yeah, what you're going to say is not even going to get through to them anyway. They're super, they're super tough, super tough to coach. They're, they're not listening pretty much because they're so in their own head. But all right, uh, um, gosh, what's the movie? There's the the Netflix movie about um, uh, shoot, what's his name? The lefty from Argentina that was like played in the seventies. Uh, Gonzalez? No. Nastasi? Oh no no no. no v Launder. No. No, no, it's something like that. Uh, the one who was supposed to be ranked number one in the world, but he got the yes, over. the one that was supposed to be ranked ahead of Jimmy Connors. Vilas, 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 Guillermo Vilas. Yeah, yeah. No, he like he had his coach. I mean, he had a coach he could really, really trust, and one of the best coaches probably. But he's like, I didn't think, I didn't do anything. All I did was listen and just do. So I got rid of all things to think about. So he was just doing. And it was really the, for a little while in, his, in a Netflix documentary, they talked about it and it was pretty cool. Like, it was just like, I, I just do. My coach says I do it. There's, mm-hmm. no, there's no, nothing for debate because what he says is I'm going to do it. And it's like, dang, it takes out, takes out so much of your own mind. Because most people, especially in tennis, most people's minds. And for me too, my mind would get in my way. So I thought that was really cool. But you have to have a coach you can really trust and like a full-time coach. But I thought that was cool. That's kind yeah, of cool. you can get especially more, tennis gets get, so emotional. So, yeah, yeah, you can get more done in practice too. Because I feel like uh, the kids that I coach that overthink, they'll try to figure it out in in the middle of the drill, and then they'll miss it because they pulled up or whatever the reason was, and then they'll be thinking about kind of moping around instead of just going back and listening to the coach what the coach says or what or just yeah. preparing for the next ball. They're like, uh, I stayed down on that one. How did I miss it? And then it's like, well, you didn't stay down. Get back to the freaking middle of the court and hit the next wall. That's interesting. That's like a that's like a statement your dad really ran through. He used to be like, don't mess the ball twice. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. He was very, very on that. Like you know, what or what was one good? My dad would always be like, and I think we, me and Dustin both did it. As he'd be talking to us, he'd be like, you're not listening. You're thinking. You're you're thinking about what to say next. And we, like, well, he'd do it more than me. But when we'd be talking to us, maybe most of the time my dad's right. Sometimes we're wrong, you know, everyone's wrong once in a while. But we'd we'd already be like, <laughs> oh, I have an excuse. Yeah, yeah, we'd already he'd be like, you're not thinking. Turn off your brain. You're already thinking of what to say. And if like we could, if people, if more kids had just got rid of that and were like, what should I do? Yes. Oh, like, yeah, huge. Yeah. But you have to have someone, a good coach you can trust. But I've always felt kind of like that excuse is like almost like like throw that excuse out there and it's like them not holding themselves accountable. Oh yeah, something's like, always happening. Yeah, oh, they're like, oh, this the ball happened, down, this happened. This it's court's like, a little dirty. Therefore, it wasn't my fault. I missed that shot or didn't do the correct thing. Something else outside affected it. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. it's like I didn't. Really Light shine and then yeah. my my grip slipped and then my my shoe went untied. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I always think that all the time. I'm like, uh. Just, just listen and, and then apply it for the next ball. Don't let it, you know, affect you. Yeah. And it's, I, from what I've noticed, it's really noticeable the, the the players who are asking questions and listen jump levels much faster. Way quicker. I, yeah, it's crazy. I think. Amen. Amen. Good chats. I like that. I'm going to try to text Akita here. That sounds pretty good. That was pretty good. That was good. Anything else? Anything else we need to touch on with that or no? Mm. That was a pretty good little string of stuff. All right. Hey, guys. uh, Super pumped today. We're bringing on to the show special guest, Nikita Schnezko. We wanted to talk to him about his big match clinch uh, two weekends ago. Huge. Huge, huge. Just 
just to tell, let's just how, what what was it like? What went through your head? Let's go go over the whole process. So who are we playing? Situation. Yeah. So uh, two weeks ago, we were in Montana playing on Montana State. We lost them last year, four or three. So coming in, we knew that was like a big match for us. Um, and so, yeah, it was our early match on Sunday, and like I lost the previous day in singles, so I was kind of trying to get a singles win under my belt. And yeah, just it was like. Going into it, we won the doubles point, and then we went to singles. There's only four courts there. So, uh, yeah, I knew, like, we were going to win at one. It was going to kind of come down to me at four. And so, ended up, like, winning the first set 6-4, and then had a close second one, 5-4 uh, deuce, and then clinched it by uh, hitting a backhand down the line pass to win it. Ooh, nice feeling. In the second set? Yeah, second set, 6-4. Was that was anyone else on court? Uh, at the time, it was uh, two singles and then our five and six. We're just starting. Oh, okay, they just, just starting. Courts. Yeah, they just have four courts there, so it was kind of mm -hmm. weird. But the old Nebraska days, we only had four courts for a little while too. How was that silence? <laughs> I thought Nikita was gonna respond back. Oh shit. That was hilarious. Like it was the Nikita talking, Dusty talks. Nikita just ignores him. That was unreal. Oh no, I I don't know. <laughs> that was so bad. You had to respond, dude. Like, come on. Look at this yeah. You guys just like uh, this conversation is dead. Dead. <laughs> well, I mean, I wasn't a part of the conversation. It was Nikita and then you, and then I was like, oh Nikita will probably be like. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. You guys, I didn't know you guys had four courts. Yeah, that was that was bad on I me. Mean, <laughs> First time podcast. Some, some say you're misunderstood though. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. <laughs> okay. Hey, how how different how different is the energy in the you know, like playing a match with only four courts? You know, like what's yeah, it like? Yeah, that's four weird. courts versus six. It's pretty weird because like I mean it didn't happen to us, but let's say like it was like going into the last two matches, like it could be like two, three or three, two. And like, you could like start a whole new match and it could last like another hour or two. If like, you only have four courts, obviously, but it was like a little bit less stressful because we won at like when it was already like four zero. So it wasn't as stressful as like, if it was other matches were still being played, but yeah, it's a little bit different for sure. Do they still play out the five and six or no? What do they do at that point? Yeah, uh, we we still played the conference it probably. Yeah, we still played it out, but if we went to a third, it would be like a ten point tiebreaker. So, yeah, was, if the match was finished, yeah, 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 yeah. Because if it wasn't finished, they'd play out full third. Yeah, yeah. If it wasn't finished, it'd be full third, and that would take for forever probably. Was, yeah. What What does you and what does you guys conference do? Does is it like play it out even when you lose? For Summit League, we uh, we play out because then we give out awards for, like, all conference, and that's based on, like, who you win. So the only so time they we play ever, it out. Yeah, we always play, play it out. Like, in the Big Ten, they never played it out. Yeah, Big um, Ten was kind of bull crap at that. And Summit League, we always play it out. The only time we don't play it out is conference tournament. So, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Um, cool. Cool, cool. So, uh, what's uh, what's up on the t uh, uh, agenda for UND this upcoming weekend? Next this weekend, weekend uh, we have a huge tilt against uh, Crane um, on Ooh. Friday. A huge so, what? Tilt. Tilt, yeah. What's oh, that? I only know that from poker terms. <laughs> oh, you don't even. Oh, Dylan, you know it's what that a big is, event. Right? Like a big match, right? Big tilt. Yeah, big big match. Yeah, big match. Yeah, look up on. Usually, that. a tilt is when you're like doing really bad. I don't, no, know. I don't know. You don't know modern lingo. <laughs> Stay with the times, huh? Stay yeah, you got to keep up with the emojis, dude. Yeah, go oh, I've heard of tilted as a boy. Wow, yeah. no, this is different. This is different. Like a big match. Yeah. No, so tilted is, is like tilted. really big day. No, tilt. It's a big tilt. Yeah, but whatever. So, yeah, we have a big match against Crane on Friday. They're uh, not in our conference, but like they're – Probably like the closest team we have to us. Um, they're not bad. I just saw them play Nebraska last weekend. Yeah, so they're, they're it's gonna be pretty tough. It's gonna be important to get the doubles point, and then especially playing at home, like gonna use the crowd and our energy to our advantage. So it's gonna be a big one. Um, hopefully, we can Let's win. Go, and, baby, 
for a record going to six and oh and then how many courts you guys got we got six like three and three and three and then there's like a balcony in the middle so got a we got a nice scoreboard out there yeah so u.s open colored courts <laughs> let's go yeah, pretty nice um, how's that how's the game feeling how's the game feeling game's feeling good uh i didn't lose serve this past weekend so it's serving pretty well and then uh yeah <laughs> Need to continue chipping, charging into the net, using my length, and then. But yeah, I'm playing not bad. So we keep uh, going forward, and then uh, we play Gustavus on Sunday. So hopefully, we can get another dub there. But that at home, or is that at uh, Gustavus? That at home. So Sunday we play at five, and then Sunday it's three thirty. So yeah. Have you been getting any inspiration from this Australian Open from maybe a certain Ben Shelton, Nick? Ben Shelton, big serve. Uh, yeah, kind yeah. of chips in, charges a little bit, certain volley, kind of unpredictable, kind of like yourself. That is true. Yeah, unpredictable <laughs> on emotions too, or just the tennis? No, Ben Shelton seems a little more solid. <laughs> that, that is true. That's no, true. he's pretty mentally stable, but have you been getting any inspiration like I just asked you? Or Yeah, yeah, no. I, <laughs> I've been getting inspiration for sure, like for college tennis. There's so many college players, but yeah, Ben Shelton doing pretty well. That's good for college tennis and moving okay. forward, so... Hope, hope other people are getting inspiration as well. And they, so you and you and D10, they're off to their best start. In, uh, is it school history? <laughs> <laughs> what is this dusty loud? What happened? What the heck? Oh, God, just... <laughs> what happened? What do you say? I missed it. You know, what did he what no, say? Because he just like never really answered the question, but you know. I didn't really I know. know. To, I don't really know what to say. I like. So you haven't watched any of Ben Shelton, basically. I, I did like a little bit yesterday. But like, uh, I don't know. He's, Who he's did he play yesterday? Tommy Paul. Okay. Some okay. people say I look Fair. like Tommy Paul. He, he did not play Tommy Paul. Fun fact. People you idiots, you like JJ Wall. Wall. Fun fact. No, ben Shelton. Ben Shelton. Yeah, he, he played Tommy, Tommy Paul. Paul's outside. Tommy Paul's in the semis. I thought they played. Yeah, Tommy Paul beat Ben Shelton yesterday in the quarterfinals. Yeah, yeah, they played last night. People say I look like Tommy Paul, though, no big deal. <laughs> I thought Tommy Paul was... You look like Kirk Hill. Oh, Tommy, Tommy Paul is in the True. series. He beat, I see. Yeah. Yeah, he beat Tommy yeah, Paul. He beat yeah. Charlton in the quarterfinals. Yeah, I'm big I'm for sorry, Americans. I'm no. so confused. No, I was like, Tommy Paul's in the semifinals. Yeah, no. Okay. That's right. He is, yeah. First American since Roddick. That is true. What? Oh, an Australian Open. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because, like, T- yeah, Francis was in the finals of the US Open last year. Yeah. No? Right? yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But also, but anyways, UND is off to their best start. Is that in school history? Yes. Uh, in D1 era, I'm pretty sure. So I don't know. Under the lead of Coach Tom Boyson, baby. Let's T-B. go. TB. TB, baby. It's Toby. Toby and Dusty's favorite coach, Tom Tom Boyson. Yes, sir. TB. <laughs> but, but yeah, never my coach to be fair. But yeah. <laughs> He's a good guy though. Right, Dusty. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but yeah, it's a good start, five and zero. So hopefully we can like keep going and maybe have a shot at getting somewhere in the top seventy-five in the next ranking. So we'll who's see. the top team in your guys' conference? Like you, because even uh, if you're not ranked, Denver. It's last year Drake won it and Denver got second and we got third. Uh, so. Because if you win your conference, you get an automatic bid in into Yeah. So um, no, yeah. Drake and Drake and Denver is probably pretty good though, huh? Yeah, they're pretty. Denver's tough. down. A couple Denver. of us upsets, maybe. Yeah, Denver. We play Denver at home on uh, Senior Day. So, wait, what is that? Wait, is that March fourth? Is that March fourth? Uh, no, uh, that that's that's Illinois State. Oh 4th, yes, yo, that's like in two months. There's no way the season's done. That's when we plan on going. That's when. That's yeah, when. That's, that's, that's when uh, OTR is driving out to watch the match in person. March fourth. <laughs> yep. I'm buzzing over to Grand Forks. Oh, do I send it? Do I send it down? We, oh, I'm gonna, uh, we are gonna get so rowdy. I'm gonna literally go so hard, dude. I'm gonna be all in Illinois State's head. <laughs> all right, Dusty, thanks for hopping on. Uh, appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. Uh, can't wait. Uh, you're headed out to Spain on Friday to go ATP hardcore tournaments and uh, coach Christian Harrison. So, uh, hope that goes well. And I uh, will see you, uh, hoping y'all get on in a little bit, a couple weeks or something like that. Yeah, that. For sure. Thanks for having me. Last. Nick, thanks for making it almost on time. Yep, no worries. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, hey, we'll see you guys later.